What's up everybody, GenX Dividend Investor here. In this video I share 7 cheap dividend kings, including one of which I own. But first I wanted to do a shout out to Max Roderick, who just clicked that join button to become my latest channel member. Thanks folks, I really appreciate you for all joining my team. Now Warren Buffett has a famous quote that goes, It's far better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. And it highlights the importance of considering both the quality of a company and the price you pay for its stock. I ask you to reflect on that as you watch this video, and remember that just because it's a cheap Dividend King stock, it doesn't automatically mean it's a great company worth investing in. A Dividend King is a company that has paid and raised its dividend for at least 50 consecutive years, which is really amazing when you think about it. It means that a company was able to stay the course for over 5 decades, returning more and more cash to shareholders in the form of a dividend. Dividend paying stocks are often seen as safer investments because they are usually paid by companies that have been around for a long time. But the reality is that there are always risks with investing, and as an example, think of General Motors. I mean, they were founded in 1908 and have been one of the largest automakers in the US since the 1930s, and they paid a reliable and consistent dividend for multiple decades. But in 2009, they declared bankruptcy and the stock went to zero, as they had massive amounts of debt and the Great Recession hit them particularly hard. Some of you may remember that they got bailed out by the government and then they filed to go public again a couple years later, and then in 2014 they started paying a dividend again. My point in sharing all that is to remind you that no company is guaranteed, and thus dividends are not guaranteed, and if you take the risk of not diversifying your portfolio enough, then you also put yourself at risk of downside events like what happened to GM, or Enron, Sears, Kodak, and a bunch of other companies. We've seen companies like Citigroup and Bank of America that had to cut their dividend due to the subprime mortgage crisis in 2008, and we saw how BP cut their dividend after the 2010 Deepwater Horizon oil spill, which was one of the largest environmental disasters in US history. Note, no Dividend King has ever gone bankrupt to my knowledge, but last year we saw how VC Corp, ticker VFC, was dropped from the King list after they implemented their first dividend cut in more than 50 years. If you want to invest and you want to minimize your risks of owning individual companies, then consider going with broad market ETFs like VTI or VU. And of course, you want to understand why something is cheap, because there are often reasons why the market is punishing the stock. Okay, so I pulled the latest list of Dividend Kings from a site called SureDividend.com. I then put each of these king tickers into my favorite stock analysis tool called FastGraphs, which I'm an affiliate of, in order to help me quickly identify tickers that were under their fair value. Of course, you never want to buy or sell just based on this info, as you always want to do a lot more rigorous analysis and cross-checking before ever investing. However, I do value the insights I can get by using FastGraphs. So for example, to quickly identify cheap dividend kings, I can just switch through the list of tickers I put in and look for a graph where the current black price line is underneath the orange line which represents a fair value for the stock. Thus, the further the current stock price is under both its orange and blue lines, then the higher the likelihood that it's cheap. Okay, starting with ABV, we see its ticker looks expensive since its current stock price is both above the orange fair value line as well as above its blue line, which is the PE multiple at which the market has tended to value the company over time. Going to ABM, I'd say it looks reasonably priced since its current black stock price is between the blue and orange lines. So it's looking slightly more expensive than its orange fair value estimate, but it's also cheaper than its blue line which means it's under how the market has historically evaluated it based on its earnings. And the more you look at stocks, you'll find that stock prices follow earnings, generally speaking, over time. So as earnings go up, then stock prices go up, and as earnings go down, then stock prices go down. Okay, next up is Abbott Laboratories, which looks expensive. And then we come to the first of seven dividend kings which looks cheap, and that's Archer Daniels Midland. They're an agricultural company that deals with seeds and food oils and other products for humans and pets and fertilizers and such. We see that it has a 3.12% dividend yield, and you can tell visually by looking at its fair value orange line that its earnings have been weak, with ups and downs instead of a nice trend up. But when we look at the last two decades, with a couple years of forecasted growth, it surprisingly managed a 7.25% annualized growth rate. You can also see something weird with a big drop off a couple years ago. If we look at the smaller time frame from 2023 until forecasted 2026, you can tell visually that fair value is expected to drop to a low point at the end of this year, which basically means earnings are dropping, and then they kind of meander sideways, which is obviously something you don't want to see. Now a logical question to ask is how good is this tool at forecasting things? Well, the tool really isn't forecasting, but it's instead showing you forecasted data from professional analysts, which then begs the question how good are those analysts at predicting future growth rates? And we care about growth because stock prices follow earnings. Well, if we click on the Analyst Scorecard tab, we get some interesting insights to help us understand how good their forecasting has been. Here we see the number of analysts estimating the forecasted earnings growth rates, along with what their average one-year and two-year estimates were in relation to what they actually ended up being, which basically tells us how good they are at estimating. 
FastGraft gives a 10% margin of error for the one-year estimates and a 20% margin for the two-year, and then it tells you how often the analysts missed their estimates because the company did poorer than they calculated, or if the company met their estimates or beat their estimates. So for ADM, there have been over 10 analysts they got data from, and on average, their one-year estimate was missed 42% of the time, which is a pretty low success rate, thus I wouldn't put too much confidence in their earnings estimates. You'll find that some analysts have much better track records estimating growth, and those are the ones I'd put more confidence in, though even a perfect historical track record doesn't mean their future estimates will also be perfect. And of course, some companies lend themselves to easier estimating. Some useful info I found on my Sure Dividend spreadsheet, some of which you can also find on Fast Graphs if you look at other screens, is this info showing one-year and five-year analyzed dividend growth rates. So we see ADM is set a one-year dividend CAGR of 11.1%, which means their latest dividend hike was 11.1%, and they have a five-year dividend CAGR of 7.4%, which means they've averaged a 7.4% hike each year for the last five years. They currently have a nice low payout ratio of about 33%. Part of the reason why ADM stock took a beating was that they apparently had an accounting scandal which shook the markets. And then last quarter, ADM got nailed due to failing commodity prices, along with an increase in supply leading to some falling revenue numbers, which were below analyst estimates. So is ADM a beaten down diamond in the rough, which will recover and head up to a decent growth path again, or is it too risky for you to invest? Obviously you need to do a lot more research, but hopefully you've gotten enough insights to either decide it merits a deeper look or not. Moving on to the second of seven cheap dividend kings is Black Hills Core, an electric and natural gas utility company. We see that it has a 4.48% dividend yield, and you can tell that its fair value earnings ratio has been trending up slowly, kind of like you'd expect for a utility, like you'd see from Con Ed or something like that. And this is what we see when we look at its forecasted growth, so predictions that it will grow slightly faster than it has historically averaged, probably due to AI energy demand needs. If I look at how good its analysts are, we see that the 5-7 to seven analysts reporting on Black Hills have never missed in their 1 or 2 year predictions, which significantly increases my confidence in their future growth predictions. Plus utilities are going to be less dynamic companies, generally speaking, so I'd imagine it would be easier to predict future growth rates for them. Cyclical companies, or innovative companies with lots of revenue variability, would make things a lot harder on analysis. Okay, Black Hills is a one-year dividend CAGR of 4% and a five-year dividend CAGR of 5.2%, which is more than I'd have guessed. They are also at a good payout ratio of 61%. Moving on, the third of seven cheap dividend kings is Canadian Utilities, which appears to trade on the OTC markets in the US, which is kind of a turnoff for me. It has three business units, which includes a utility segment, an energy infrastructure business, and a retail energy business, and is one of the largest regulated utility companies in Canada, and it does some business outside North America as well. We see that it has a huge 5.98% dividend yield, and you can see how its prices chase its fair value earnings line over time. Its forecasted growth looks pretty weak at 3%, and its analysts have a decent track record estimating 1 and 2 year growth rates at a 17% and 25% miss rate. Canadian Utilities has a super low one-year dividend CAGR of 1% and a low five-year dividend CAGR of 1.4%. Because it's Canadian, then it would have currency implications to deal with for us in the US, which means they may withhold some of your dividends for Canadian income tax, which then you should be able to claw back when you do your taxes if you file appropriately. I personally have one Canadian stock which I hold in my IRA so that I've not needed to deal with all that. Continuing on, the fourth of seven cheap dividend kings is Genuine Parts Co., which deals in automotive parts and repair shops and such. I like its more steadily growing earnings growth rate than in the previous tickers. We see that it has a 2.89% dividend yield, and again notice how its black price line has followed its earnings over time. Checking out its forecasted growth, we see a nice trend up and a 7.72% estimated rate. And when we check how good the analysts are, we see a very low miss rate at 8% for the one-year time frame, and a 0% for the two-year forward time frame, again with a 20% margin, so I'd have a decent degree of confidence in their growth estimates I just reviewed. Genuine Parts is a one-year dividend CAGR of 5.3%, and a nice five-year dividend CAGR of 5.6%, along with a nice low 43% payout ratio and a 0.8 beta. I think GPC might be an interesting one to dig more into. Moving on, we come to a cheap dividend king I own in Altria, ticker MO. Since stocks like Altria have obvious risks I won't elaborate on, but it also has some great income to consider. It's gotten almost 8% yield, which is huge, and checking out its forecasted growth, we see a weak 3.89%, as one might expect given their realities. And when we look at their analyst scorecard, we see a 0% miss rate for one and two year forward estimates, which means analysts are excellent at estimating how Altria will do, which makes sense given how non-volatile their business is. Altria has a one-year dividend CAGR of 4.3% and a five-year at 
that 5 years is a bit lower than I would have expected, and Seeking Alpha says it's at 4.14%, and either is probably correct depending on which years you select. Like right now it pays out 98 cents per share per quarter, and it was at 80 cents and 84 cents in 2019, and I would expect a 4 percentage hike being announced any day now. On my Twitter I ran a poll for people to guess how much they thought Altria would raise their dividend by this year, and so far, 26% of people voted that they'd do a less than 2% hike, 51% voted that MO would increase by 2-4%, and then about 21% voted that they would increase it between 4-6%, and only 2% guessed over 6%. Leave me a comment telling me what your guess is. Anyway, you can also see a pretty high 79% payout ratio, but that's normal and in line with what about management expects given their business. Moving on to the 6th of 7 cheap dividend kings when we come to National Fuel Gas, ticker NFG, which deals with the exploration, production, pipeline and storage of natural gas and oil. As you can see, it's pretty undervalued in this fast graphs. It's got a 3.53% yield, which is about in line with my expectations for utility type stock. When we look at its forecasted growth, we see a crazy 21%. I'd guess that is because they were declining for a while, and the growth uptick in the next two years would put them on their old trend lines had they not had the decline. And as you'd probably guess, national fuel gas's performance is correlated to the price of natural gas, which can be volatile. So like Russia invading Ukraine acts as upward pricing pressure as supply is constrained. Or if we have a winter that is warmer than usual, then that will apply downward pressure on demand and thus earnings and the stock price. Of course, when I go with utilities, I wouldn't be looking for big price appreciation, but instead my main focus would be striving for solid income. Anyway, given those high growth estimates, let's check out how good their analysts are. What we see is that they seem to be decent, with one-year estimates missing 25% of the time, and two-year estimates only missing 8% of the time. And that growth estimate could always be a data issue, so double check. NFG has a one-year dividend category of 4%, and a five-year of only 3.4%, but it has a nice 39% payout ratio. Okay, moving on to our last cheap dividend king, and we have Nucor Corporation, a steel company. They have a pretty interesting looking chart here. Like around the financial crisis, they dropped through the floor. Then they started coming back and had a huge temporary uptick after the pandemic. These would all be things I'd dig into if I was thinking of investing. And of course, you want to look at their revenue and income trends, their debt situation, etc, etc. I'm just touching on a few quick things to give you a flavor of the company. You can watch my early videos to see how in depth I like to go with my investments. Okay, it's got a low 1.32% yield, which is lower than I'd expect. When we look at its forecasted growth, we see a negative 2.81%, so basically they spiked up and are merely coming back down to earth. Another tool I'm fond of using to glean more insights into stocks is Seeking Alpha, which I'm also an affiliate of. It has a bunch of valuable data points, like this summary section, which compares Seeking Alpha writers on how they rate Nucor between strong buy, buy, hold, sell, or strong sell, versus what the Wall Street analysts have. And then they have this interesting section talking about what the bulls say about it and what the bears say. So the bulls say that Nucor's recent mergers and acquisitions will diversify their business, but still trends will be a primary driver of their performance, reminding me of how natural gas is for NFG. Bulls also say that government stimulus should support elevated demand, leaving shares attractively priced at 13x earnings. The bears say that Nucor is facing a challenging steel pricing market and some other things. Both of those quick blurbs link to articles that go a lot deeper, and the reason I love Seeking Alpha so much is because of the articles and because of all the comments that passionate investors leave in response to the articles, some of which often give you new and valuable insights. Nucor has a 1 year dividend category of 5.9% and a 5 year of 6.1% along with a nice 12% payout ratio. I'd like to have seen more dividend growth given such a low yield, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. Ok and while those were all cheap dividend kings I found, there also are some historically great dividend kings I identified which aren't cheap but are more reasonably priced, which for a quality company can be hard to find. Specifically I'm talking about Target and J&J. &J. And with that I'd like to close things off and do a shout out to Soulkiss who just snagged a Patreon aristocrat seat. I strongly recommend that everyone consider using my FastGraphs affiliate link along with my coupon code in the description of this video, as using both will allow new users to get 25% off their first payment even if they sign up for a full year. I'll also recommend checking out my Seeking Alpha affiliate link, as new users can often get good discounts for signing up. Plus, take a look at my Patreon seats to see if there's any you want to sign up for, but since my Patreon aristocrat and king seats are usually sold out, I'll also recommend that you join my channel membership, which gives you a variety of perks, including a badge icon that is placed by your comments on my videos and which levels up over time as long as you're a member, and you get the ability to vote on which thumbnails I use for my next video, and you get to watch my videos about a day before I release them publicly, and you get a shout out like you heard at the beginning of this video. 
But whatever you do, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and click that bell notification. And don't forget to join my free dividend Discord chat server, which has over 11,000 dividend investors on it from 81 countries around the world. Thanks for watching, stay positive, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor and my videos are for entertainment and inspirational purposes only. Investing of any kind involves risk. I'm only sharing my opinions with no guarantee of gains or losses on investments.